good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice Radio. So today, we're going to see a deck. We're going to take a look at a deck that is seeing a lot of play and a lot of success over in Japan. It is Turbo, Reshiram, and Zekrom. Now, we've talked about Reshiram and Zekrom. We know that it can be an extremely good card. But this is a slightly different build than we've seen before, and it looks like it's going to work very nicely indeed. So if we start off having a little bit of a look at Reshiram and Zekrom, it's going to take a lot to not keep accidentally calling it Reshiram and Charizard. The main attack here, our main concern, is one fire, one lightning energy, discard up to three in any combination of basic fire and basic lightning energy cards from your bench Pokemon, this attack does 90 damage for each card you discarded in this way. So that's 270 HP. Now, the thing to remember here is, firstly, 270 is perfect, Reshiram and Charizard, Mew to a Mew, you're golden. But also, you need the energy on Reshiram and Zekrom, and you need the energy on your bench Pokemon to discard. So you need to have the fire and the lightning on the Reshiram and Zekrom, but the energy you're discarding to do the extra damage is from the bench only. It's quite a bit. Be a one-hit KOing the Tag Team GXs, so that's probably alright. The GX attack here, two fire, two lightning energy, which is actually less in total than the first one. It does 170 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. But if you played End Resolve from your hand during this turn, it does 170 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And uh, now the good news is Jirachi is seeing a lot of play at the moment. That'll get KO'd. The good news is Dedene is seeing even more play at the moment. And that will get one hit KO'd. The bad news is that Mew is also seeing a lot of play. And Mew will block all the bench damage. If your opponent has a Mew in play, you use this and you do nothing. Nada. Zero damage to anything. That's a bit of a pain. Okay, then. So we're not using Naganadal here. This isn't a build where we use Naganadal to get a whole bunch of energy out and use Beast String because you're playing Naganadal. It's not that build. How do we get the energy? And we get the energy through supporter cards. Now, one thing to notice here, this is pre-rotation, though, honestly, there are very few cards here that we particularly care about losing. This will work fine post-rotation. We use Welder. Welder allows you to attach two fire energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon and then draw three cards. It's great. It sees a huge amount of play already and it's only going to see more play in decks like this. Kiawe is still legal in Japan. We don't need Kiawe. We're not playing Kiawe. Welder is better. You know what else is better? Ends Preparation. Discard the top six cards from your deck. If any of those cards are basic energy, attach them to one of your dragon Pokemon in play. Now, ideally here, you've already got the energy on your active. And then you use this to get the energy on your bench Pokemon ready to discard and roll. It'll work nicely. And they are your two principal ways of getting energy. Now, obviously, you play a little bit of Tapu Koko here because why would you not? And Tapu Koko Prism Star, you get to Lost Zone it from the bench and attach one energy to each of two bench Pokemon. And this actually means you can get a turn one attack with Reshiram and Zekrom. Welder to attach two energy, attach for the turn, Tapu Koko Prism Star, and there's your four energy. As long as you attach a lightning energy from your hand, you're good. Tapu Koko gets an energy, you attach from your hand, you use Welder, there's four energy, and you can go second and get turn one, 170 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And then start using the first attack to smash. Did I just mention any cards that are rotating out of the standard format? No, because they're not. Now, there are a couple of other Pokemon that we are playing here. We're playing Dedene. Gives you a bit of extra speed. Now, the one really big loss as far as I can see 
is Tapu Lele. This deck plays 2 to Dene, 2 Tapu Lele. There's nothing to stop you playing kind of 3 or 4 to Dene, but losing Tapu Lele does hurt, because it guarantees your welder or your end's preparation. I think you can make this deck fast and consistent enough without Tapu Lele, but I will concede the fact that Tapu Lele does see a fair amount of play in the Japanese list we're seeing at the moment. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's the way it is. But we've also got Jirachi. If it's in the active, you look at the top five cards of your deck, find a trainer card, put it in your hand, he goes to sleep, but then you can use a skateboard to retreat for free and jobs are good un. So you don't need to worry all that much, you'll be fine. And I know we're losing Tapu Lele, but we're still going to have Dedene and Jirachi, so that will be all right. We do have two copies of Marshadow here. This is a decent attacker against stuff like Naganadal, for instance, or Buzzwall. But really here, this is to get rid of stadiums. You need your abilities on your GXs here. So we need to try and counter Power Plant. Some decks, now I'm using one list principally that is my favourite. There are other lists that play slightly differently. This list doesn't play Giant Hearth. Some of them do. Obviously they all play Heat Factory Prism Star because it's amazing. Discard a Fire Energy, draw free cards. It's great. But you cannot be stuck behind Power Plant. Incidentally, Giant Hearth is really good here for discarding the Lightning Energy for Tapu Koko and then searching the two Fire Energy to attach using Welder. So Giant Hearth should be one you're thinking about. And then there's a Turtonator. It's a decent non-GX attacker. It's not phenomenal, but a lot of Fire decks at the moment play one Turtonator as a non-GX attacker. The thing that we see here is like 20 Energy. 10 Fire, 10 Lightning. These decks play an obscene amount of energy. And the reason they play an obscene amount of energy, and there's another list that plays 10 Lightning, 12 Fire, the reason is extremely simple. You need the energy. This works because of the energy. If you don't get the energy fast enough, you lose, ladies and gentlemen. You lose. Straight off the bat. Now, in terms of trainer cards, we have lost Ultra Ball, but we can substitute in Mysterious Treasure or maybe even Electromagnetic Radar if you want to go ahead and get your Dedene. It's not perfect, but it's not the end of the world. We've still got Cherish Ball, and that's the most important thing. We are also losing Guzma and Escape Rope, but you can work around them, ladies and gentlemen. It's, they're not the biggest losses ever. Everybody loses them. Obviously, we want to be playing Palpad here to try and make sure that we've got all of our supporter cards and we can use them turn after turn. And like every deck, it's going to play a copy of Reset Stamp so that you can put your opponent down to a low hand size later on in the game. I love this deck. Yes, Japan are playing Sun and Moon on and we need to make a few changes, but this isn't one of those decks that won't work. This will absolutely work. If we take a look at the first list here, we've lost Tapu Lele, but there's other things we can play, more to Dene and Jirachi. We're losing Ultra Ball, but we've got other options, and then Guzma Escape Probe and Field Blower that everybody's losing. I don't feel too bad about that. Now, if we take a look at a different list here, it's different, but it's very, very similar indeed. It's the same kind of list, if I'm honest with you. They're playing like one more Jirachi, but it's, it's extremely similar. And then I can show you a third list here. Like I say, this deck has been crushing. And this list doesn't actually play any Ultra Ball, though it does play a couple of Nest Ball. And it plays an Ace Roller. And it adds in a giant half. Ace Roller again. We'll just have to say goodbye to it. But you can see from these lists here, this is not a deck which is only viable because of cars that are still legal in Japan. Make no mistake about it. This is a phenomenal deck. This should be one of the very best decks when Cosmic Eclipse comes out. And up till now, people have been talking about playing it with Naga Nadal. And it seems like the better way to play this is a speed list relying on supporters... And frankly, crushing. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. A deck that is taken over Japan and a deck that is looking very, very good indeed. But I would very much like to know your opinions on the deck, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! 
Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays. That's where you can find out about a whole bunch of games, even if they don't have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.